So this is our 28 foot tiny house. Uh, as you can see, the front looks a little different than the sides in the back. Uh, that's because we decided to use open jointed cladding on the front. Um, and the wood that we used for the open jointed cladding is larch. Larch really is the best wood for doing this kind of uh, cladding because larch is a very slow growing tree uh, that has a very dense wood and also a very high oil content. So it's very rather weather resistant for many, many years. One of the other things that you'll notice on the front of this is that rather than your standard white vinyl windows, uh, we went with a, a much more upgraded black aluminum. And I think this really adds to the, the modern look of this tiny house. Um, a couple other things you'll see on the front is the black light uh, above the door. Uh, and the door itself has the, the blinds built in between the panes of glass and the window. And this protects the blinds from getting damaged um, and also looks great. The other thing that you'll see on the front of the house here is the dryer vent. Um, so inside the house, we have a stacked washer and dryer, and this is where the dryer vent comes out. So we go around to the side of the house here, and we see the 12,000 BTU mini split, as well as a cabinet above that. And then down to the left, we also see an outdoor outlet. The cabinet houses two things. It houses a control unit for the LP gas water heater, and it also houses our 50 amp circuit breaker. This tiny house runs just fine off a 20 amp circuit, so we can run the mini split and all the lights and everything in the house off a 20 amp. But if you're gonna start connecting things like toaster ovens, microwaves, you're probably gonna wanna run this off 50. But the 20 amp means that you could connect it right to a house or uh, any standard 20 amp circuit um, just with your standard plug and you'll be ready to go. Now, as we move over on this side of the tiny house, we see our LP gas on-demand uh, water heater. This is an outdoor unit that's made to be set up outdoor. Using an LP gas water heater outside is a much safer option. In case anything does go wrong with the firing, it's very unlikely, but in case anything does go wrong, we don't have any possibility of carbon monoxide or any other kind of fumes that might come. Beyond that, when it burns, it also releases moisture. And in a tiny house, moisture can build up very, very fast. So anything that builds or produces moisture and we can have outside, we want to. Below the water heater here, we have our inlet and outlet and they can be used vice versa. And we made them this way. Again, so if somebody wants to set this up in their backyard or near their house, they can just set this up with a hose and be ready to go. We also decided that we wanted the connections to be simple enough where somebody could just connect your normal barbecue style tank. If you wanna do something more and upgrade it, it's also very, very easy to connect it to a larger tank that you could have. As we move around onto this side of the house, we see we have uh, three more windows. Uh, again, all of the black aluminum windows, which is again, a, a really big upgrade, much longer lasting and much better looking. As we move on to this side of the house, here are the bedroom windows, one of my favorite parts of this tiny house. So you, when you wake up in the morning, you can look outside these and see whatever view you might be looking at here. Um, so on this side of the house, we see that this is not a picture window. This is actually one of our egress windows. Uh, in case something bad did happen and your exit was blocked in the other side of the tiny house, this is your exit um, in this tiny house. So here we are inside the tiny house. So right now we're looking at the kitchen. The kitchen includes a couple of features that I like. So we have our two burner stove and above the two burner stove is our exhaust fan. And this is what we saw on the outside as well where the exhaust fan exits out because in a tiny house, moisture uh, can build up really fast. So we wanna get that out as fast as we possibly can. Uh, on top of that, uh, any kind of cooking smoke or anything we'd have, we wanna get out in a small space. Um, underneath the exhaust fan is a custom tempered glass wall protectant. So if we look over now to the other side of the kitchen area, we see our, our stand-up fridge, which has a lot of space in it. And above the stand-up fridge, we see a cabinet. So this cabinet can be used for a couple of different things. One, obviously it can be used for storage. 
Secondly, that middle shelf can come out and it has a vent in the back side of the cabinet there that allows you to run a cord to the outlet behind there and put in a microwave or a large toaster oven um, that you might want to add for cooking. So most of the storage in the kitchen actually is below the countertop here. And so we see that the kitchen really does actually have a lot of storage space. So another thing that we see here in the kitchen is our two outlets um, just to the left of the two burner stove. Each one of these outlets is a 20 amp uh, circuit and they're each on their own individual circuit. This is something that's required by NOAA as well for NOAA certification. So as we look to the side of the kitchen, to the left of the kitchen here, we see our living area inside this tiny house. This whole area here, this whole tiny house really, is left uh, with this really nice open feel, somewhere that you want to spend time in, rather than somewhere uh, that you might feel like you're living in somebody's closet. On the front side of the, the living area, we see our custom-made bookshelf, bookcase. And on top of that, uh, we have a uh, office desk area that we built in. And so the office desk area also has a, a hole drilled in it uh, so you can run your computer cords down to the outlet below in the bookcase uh, so you don't have tangled cords everywhere. So above the desk area, what we have is our TV area. And this also has a raised outlet. So when you put your flat screen TV on the wall here, you don't have cords hanging everywhere. So here we are in the bedroom. One thing that we notice is that all the doors are actually pocket doors as opposed to hinge doors. Pocket doors are the right choice in any tiny house as they save a lot of space. The biggest feature that we have in the bedroom here are the two large 48 by 48 windows. So if we look up, we see the ceiling fan. The ceiling fan is controlled by a remote control near the light switch. And this controls the speed and the dimming setting on the ceiling fan. The ceiling fan is really a great feature in this tiny house as it allows air to flow from the main living area into the bedroom. So in the bathroom, a couple of features that we have is a stacked washer and dryer. These are full size washer and dryer. To the left of the washer and dryer, we have our alcove shower with a rain shower installed. Between the shower and the sink, we have our cabinets. These cabinets are open so it's accessible while taking a shower. So if you have uh, shampoo or anything else that you want to store in the cabinet, um, that's easy to get to. If we look up, we see the other exhaust fan that we have in this tiny house. So this tiny house has a total of two exhaust fans, one in the bathroom and one in the kitchen. The one in the bathroom is very important and we want to have this running as much as we can while we're using the shower um, because we don't want water to build up in a small space. In this tiny house, we have our standard flush toilet. This toilet has a low flow and a high flow flush. And as well, we installed an outlet near the toilet that allows the buyer to decide if they wanna use something like an incinerating toilet or any other kind of off-grid options that they might choose that have fans. The outlet there is also another dedicated 20 amp outlet, so it is sufficient for an electric incinerating toilet as well. So a couple features throughout this tiny house that I like are the engineered maple floor. Using engineered flooring rather than solid gives us the ability to build this floor as a floating floor. So if we look up in our tiny house here, we see all the lights are low profile LEDs. LEDs are really an important option to have. If we're gonna be running solar uh, and using battery banks, we wanna be drawing as little of energy for things like light that we can. So we can save that energy maybe for heating or cooling. Thanks for taking a look at our tiny house.